Welcome back to the Radio Hyperactivity channel. I'm trying something uh, a little bit different today, no talking hands. And uh, this build, it took uh, it took quite a while, so creating a traditional video of it would probably be rather boring. But uh, we'll uh, try and do this uh, slideshow instead. I'll uh, talk you through the steps I uh, I made to uh, to create this thing. This is, of course, as you probably know, seeing the thumbnail and all, it's a uh, uh, one to four uh, antenna switch for HF, and it's remote controllable over uh, the internet. And uh, yeah, it's made from a relatively inexpensive parts that you can get from, uh, for example, AliExpress. And uh, yeah, I'll uh, go through uh, quickly the parts needed for this. And uh, there's also going to be some uh, a bill of material uh, of sorts in the uh, video description, so you can uh, you can uh, have a closer look. There's also going to be a GitHub uh, link with the, the 3D printed uh, files and also the free CAD designs if you want to make changes to them. So let's get uh, into it and have a look at uh, the parts needed for this uh, build. Um, this is uh, sort of an overview of uh, all the things you need and uh, all, uh, actually also all the tools you need. The uh, the bear can on uh, on the right is uh, it's an optional extra, but it's a recommended optional extra. It makes uh, building this thing a lot more pleasant. So there are 3D printed parts. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much uh, detail, but you can, uh, as I said, you can find the STL files for that on uh, GitHub, which is uh, linked uh, below, and also the free CAD uh, designs if you want to make some changes to them. There, uh, uh, there are two boxes, one for the remote control unit and one for the actual antenna switch. I didn't want to put the uh, the uh, microcontroller into the antenna switching uh, enclosure, especially, especially since it's made of plastic. So I'm figuring that might cause some interference issues. Also, you might want to mount this in a way that you want the antenna for the um, for the ESP32, which is the microcontroller in the controller box, to be at a, a better location for uh, reaching your, your network, uh, as opposed to where you actually do the antenna switching. So that's the reason for the two boxes. Uh, that's the lid of the um, of the control box with the hole for the antenna and also a hole for status LEDs so you can see what uh, antenna is currently selected. This is the uh, antenna switch. We're not building that. We're just uh, buying that uh, directly from uh, AliExpress or eBay or uh, multiple other places, I'm guessing, selling the same thing. I think it's about 25 to 30 uh, US dollars or euros or uh, thereabouts, so it's not uh, really an expensive uh, thing. You're going to need uh, some heat set inserts, both for 2 millimeter or M2 and M3 uh, bolts. So I think there's four, and you need four for M2 and uh, eight for M3 screws. So not a lot of them, but uh, usually <laughs> you buy them in quantities of 50. So uh, either you have them already or you need to buy probably 50 of them. There's some uh, connectors. I'm using this, uh, I think they're called aviation connectors. They probably have uh, more technical names, but uh, the ones I used have uh, six uh, pins in them. Uh, you could get away with five pins for this design, or if you want to prepare for uh, maybe some uh, some future upgrades with uh, more uh, channels or more antenna ports, then you can, uh, of course, go for connectors with bigger um, uh, pin numbers. Also, there's a, a normal uh, power uh, connector uh, or power connector socket that uh, that's needed. Uh, I'm also using an ESP32 board. You can see it uh, there. There are some resistors, some uh, um, 2N2222 transistors. And also a power, uh, let's see, that's a DC-DC uh, converter. It's a step-down converter, so that would be a buck converter that's uh, soldered on this uh, this uh, proto board. I'm not going to show exactly how I did that. that. That depends on what the microcontroller you select, but there will be a schematic of uh, how to set this up in the uh, GitHub repo. Uh, moving on, that's, of course, you're going to need the antenna that came with the uh, ESP board that I bought. You can get these uh, ESP boards with uh, the built-in antenna or with an external antenna like this. And it, if you're going to keep it, well, any, any anywhere that's uh, not really close to your um, uh, Wi-Fi infrastructure, then I would really recommend going with the external antenna. That's uh, that's making the uh, the range of this thing a lot bigger. These uh, these are the uh, SO uh, connectors. Uh, is that SO or PL? Yes, SO SO connectors. I can't remember the numbers after that. I remember I've just called them SOs. Uh, they came with the uh, with the kit uh, with this uh, antenna switch kit and also the mounting hardware behind them. All the screws, washers, and nuts came with uh, the kit. Uh, you can buy it without this if you have the the connectors and the, all the mounting hardware already. You can buy it without it, but uh, it's not a lot extra. So uh, I'd recommend just going for it, and you get something that you know will uh, work and fit. Um, first step is to insert uh, the heatset inserts into the uh, both to the um, the antenna switch uh, enclosure and also into the control box enclosure. The the these are the M. Uh, 
three uh, inserts that we start with. Uh, fairly simple to uh, to get in. Um, lastly, you need to put the M2 uh, ones in, and that's a little bit fiddly. It's actually, at least with the with the tool that I have, it's impossible to get them completely straight, as you may be able to see there. Uh, I, I, I sort of touched the um, the wall on the, on the inside of the enclosure when I uh, inserted them. Not a huge problem, and it's not really important that they're completely straight. Uh, the important bit is that uh, they're here. Uh, they are uh, fairly well fastened so that you can use them to screw in the uh, the control board in the uh, in the next step. And uh, this is what that looks like. That's uh, four M2 screws. I think that's M2 by 10 millimeters or M2 by eight millimeter screws that I used to attach that uh, board inside the uh, the casing. Then there's the uh, the power. Um, so that that would be the power socket. That's the power input for a 5.5 millimeter barrel connector, and uh, also, but uh, right next to it, it's for the uh, the aviation connector for uh, for connecting this unit up to the actual switch. Uh, jumping a little bit back and forth here, we see we have attached all the um, all the um, SO connectors to the outside of the enclosure, and uh, this is what this then looks like on the inside with all the uh, all the four screws for each of them. I'd recommend not putting all the screws uh, in uh, at the beginning. Just put uh, maybe two for each uh, connector and don't tighten them up until you have at least two screws for every connector in. That's going to make it easier to align uh, this uh, board perfectly with the, with the holes. Also, when it comes time to soldering these center connectors, I would recommend uh, getting the iron very good and hot and maybe also using a soldering iron with uh, some uh, power to it. The one I used was a 70 watt uh, welder iron, which uh, did this job fairly, fairly well. And uh, yeah, this is uh, what it looks like after after soldering and uh, <laughs> doing some cleaning. I left uh, the um, the container of isopropyl alcohol in there to uh, to um, yeah fess up to the fact that uh, my solder joints they don't look this nice when I'm done. But uh, if you uh, wash them nicely afterwards, they uh, they can actually look quite respectable. Um, next up, I connected the um, aviation connector to the lid of the um, the switching box. And also soldered on a connector for, I used the pin number six, the center pin for the common and then the pins one through four for the different antenna ports. This board is doing, uh, it's doing what's called a low side switching. So it's actually the center connector is uh, plus 12 volts. Plus 12 volts is always delivered to the uh, switching board. And uh, you uh, select uh, one port by grounding one of the other wires. This is what the transistors does in this uh, design. And uh, this is what it looks like, and then you're about to close the uh, the enclosure. Um, I, I just uh, made these connectors out of uh, some uh, wires that already had these two point uh, connectors at the end. Cut them to an appropriate length and uh, soldered them to the uh, the aviation connector. And uh, here we have the uh, unit that's actually we're finished with the antenna switch. I think that looks uh, rather nice for a home built three uh, D printed uh, project. So next we uh, start building the. Uh, controller box. I had these, um, as you can see at the center of the screen, and also three of them are already mounted, these uh, bezels for uh, LEDs. I figured that would look uh, nice on this design, and I think it did. If uh, if you don't have them, and if you don't want to buy them, you can just make these holes a little bit smaller, and you can just stick the LEDs straight through and uh, maybe fasten them with uh, some epoxy glue or something. It's not needed. It just makes it looks, look a little bit uh, nicer. And uh, this is how we uh, connect up all the LEDs, the uh, the negative side. Uh, uh, that would be the, nah, I can't remember anymore what's the anode and the cathode. I should, uh, that's the scientific term, but there's a negative side and a positive side. And you connect all the negative sides together uh, and connect one wire to them. And of course, one single wire to each of the positive sides of the LEDs. And uh, also we prepare the uh, aviation connector for this box. It's pretty much the same as we did on the uh, on the other side. The center connector is uh, plus 12 volts. That's gonna be output from uh, from the control box and the four wires to ground uh, sequentially all the, the, uh, the relays as you switch antennas. And uh, yep, this uh, <laughs> this is where beautiful breaks down. This is not really uh, extremely tidy anymore, I think, sadly. But uh, yeah, this is what the box looks like when you're about to close it. I'd uh, recommend uh, giving it a test at this point so to see that you actually do some switching, uh, which is what I did. I just connected power and uh, I connected to the controller um, 
via uh, web browser to, to see that I can actually switch and that the LEDs on, uh, on the top actually switched as uh, expected. Um, there are instructions on GitHub on how to flash the firmware on uh, this uh, thing. I'm not going to go through this in this uh, video, but you can read that on the GitHub repo that's linked in the in the uh, description. And uh, yeah, as I said, test it before you put it together. Then you don't have to unscrew it if uh, things doesn't work out. If it does work out, you can just uh, put the lid on and uh, please verify again that it works. And uh, this is what it looks like once you get it uh, all connected up. And uh, the last thing then is to make the cable going uh, through between these. I set, I've set this up for using uh, just uh, in my shack. So this uh, cable for me is about, uh, I think, one and a half meters uh, long. Uh, it has uh, four uh, wires in it, but it's got a shield. So I use the shield for the plus uh, 12 volts and uh, the four different wires for the four different connectors. So this is uh, the one end of the plug. and. Uh, you solder both ends of the plug. Make sure to get uh, the same wires to the same connectors at uh, both ends. And also I put some tape on. You can see that in uh, this. I put some tape on for the strain relief on these aviation connectors to have something to bite into. Uh, that cable is way, way too thin to, uh, to for, for the strain relief to, uh, to actually grip onto it. I probably could have used some um, heat shrink, but uh, this uh, sounds like the, the quick approach. That should be the entire build. And uh, once you're done with that, you should have um, this nice setup. Of course, I didn't talk about the power supply. That's just a normal 12 volt power supply. I think that's able to deliver one amp, which should be uh, plenty enough for this uh, setup. So that's it for this uh, video, actually. Um, I think this was uh, would have been close to an hour of a video if I would edit uh, all the steps that I did to uh, to make this. It's going to take a little bit of time if you do sit down to do this project. I don't think that would be a very interesting uh, video, so I tried to uh, to do it as a slideshow where I spoke over it in, uh, instead. I don't know if this is something I'm going to continue doing, but uh, please leave a comment if you prefer the Talking Hands type of video or if you think this is a good format. I think from my point of view, I will just uh, decide from video to video. Some uh, some work better in the Talking Hands uh, format and some work better in this uh, presentation format. So we'll see going forwards. But if you have opinions, please uh, leave them in the comments. I'm uh, always learning a lot from uh, from the things that I read there. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos uh, like this, uh, consider subscribing. That would be uh, most appreciated. Other than that, I'll just say uh, until next time, thank you so much for watching.